Hey everyone, welcome to Cover Call ETF Investing. I'm Jordan and this is your central hub for deep Cover Call ETF data. And can you believe it? March has already blown past us. We're already looking at another Cover Call ETF All-Star Tracker update video. So let's not waste any time and let's get right into it. So for starters, if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, this Google Sheet I created, which is on my Patreon, you can pick up on the homepage in the description. It'll be in the pinned comments below. It's $13 a month, a Canadian. And uh, honestly, to, to at least try it out once, I think is worthwhile. Uh, the, the cost is worthwhile um, because I believe there's great insights from red flags, opportunities, points of interest, and also it'll just accelerate your your knowledge your education uh, you'll get you'll, you'll get with the lingo a lot quicker especially if you follow my videos this will ultimately provide a much faster path to uh, better understanding of these funds but these videos typically go on a little bit longer we are going to blitz through this i'm only going to do what i think are the most important things and uh, you guys can look at this stuff for yourself if you have questions reach out you see something that you need clarity or there's something else that 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 maybe needs to be fixed just reach out to me I'll 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 take care of that um, I, I do not ignore anybody who uh, reaches out to me when it comes to this kind of stuff so let's get into it we have um, we have two call or two tabs here that you'll see uh, we have a Canadian tab and we have a American tab. So let's go through the Canadian one first. There's over 120 funds in here from regular funds to dot B funds, which are unhedged usually, uh, meaning that they have exposed, they, they, the value also fluctuates with say the American dollar. Uh, and then we have US dollar based um, <clears throat> versions of those funds, like you see with ZWB. Yeah, it's just a, a US dollar version of Z, ZWB, if you get if you get what I'm saying here. So uh, we got a lot of just kind of general information here. I got um, forward yield is in bold. Uh, that's because that is uh, yield extrapolated out 12 months. Here we have uh, trailing 12 months of, of the past 12 months distributions. This just measures if the distribution is stable for the next 12 months. This is what the yield would be, and that's based off the most current distribution. So we're going to skip right over all this stuff, and we're going to go right over to six-month performance, price performance. Now, I know you guys have reached out in the last video and said, you know, you'd like to see total return for all of this. So that is something that I will work on doing uh, to make uh, a total return tab for, um, let's see, one year, six months, one month, one week, why not? Uh, might be a little bit trickier with one week, but for one month I could probably do that as well. So that, that'll be something that I add in the future. All right, so for opportunities here in six months, the last six months, the market has been up tremendously. So there's not too much that's actually down. You can see in red here. There's only a little bit, not much opportunity here. I mean, the last video we talked about mining in the last six months, things like base, GLCC, and I want to say um, CGXF. These were all funds that were relegated to the bottom of the heap here. So one thing I like to do, uh, as I said in the last video, um, yeah, sure, we can go out five years, but really I think the window of opportunity we're gonna find is probably in the last six months or so, just because the last three years, last five years, there's so, there's so many different uh, economic cycles we've been through, and we've been through, no doubt, a lot in the last five years. Uh, six months is probably the good window to look at for opportunity. So if we, look, so if we filter by, um, the six month period, we can also head over to the sectors and look at the sectors that are seem to be kind of not doing as great. Uh, and in my opinion, there's not there's not much on discount here, but we see utilities, energy, a little bit, but at the same time, not anything tremendously on discount. So one other thing we could do is we can go down the list. Uh, down to one month and we see a little bit more uh, Let's see what kind of sectors are we looking at here at the one month mark as far as performance we got Yeah, we got some bonds in there. We got a little bit of health care in there that I notice the odd a little bit of technology So it's 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 kind of a mixed basket But just nothing really stands out as wow. This is on discount like 
Why not? Why not really consider this fun? It's not like I can really sit here and say, yeah, that there there are thing there are funds that are tremendous deals at the moment. And sure, we could do one week, but in my opinion, one week is uh, I'm much more I'm much I would rather look at the one month and the six month outlook versus just one week. But if if you are looking at wanting immediate opportunities and take take advantage of that then sure there's there's that as well so we look at one week here we can see the sectors once again technology i mean no surprise there this pa this past week has seen technology kind of weaken we've seen a little bit of a curve in in the uh, indexes and so nothing new there all right let's move all the way over to distribution history what kinds of changes have we seen uh month over month that is always kind of the most interesting to see. NVIDIA once again upping its uh, distribution by a whopping 75%. So month over month change in distribution, 75%. Uh, another big one, QQQY, 52.38%. Uh, so great to see that. Uh, I believe now uh, um, that Evolve NASDAQ Technology Enhanced Yield Index, that technology fund from Evolve, is a, I believe it's now the most, uh, is, it has the highest yield of any cover call um, tech, cover call ETF at 15.03%. Uh, and we see a few other funds that look really impressive. CI, I'm not gonna say that we're expecting that, only because CI, once again, their distributions bounce around. They only pay out every quarter. So the last time they paid out, the last time we talked about CI and a monthly distribution change, was actually back in the very first cover call ETF uh, tracker video, which was the launch video back in January. So the CI funds they bounce around a lot. I don't put, I'm not going to put too much um, stock into into talking about them at the moment, just because of the, their structure. Their structure is much different than every other cover call um, fund manager out there who pay um, monthly, and there are and they are typically more stable distributions, or at least the variability is is pretty smooth and the, the changes are fairly minor. So going down the list here, yeah, BTCY, no surprise there. Another tech cover call ETF, small change with QMAX from Hamilton. We see BMO, a tech fund. So tech once again showing that um, uh, distribution increases, of course, when the flows of money are heading into that sector. Uh, and then everything else kind of dull. There's not much change, 0%, 0%. All the way down i love seeing zero percent just means hey everything is fairly stable once again we're also looking at we're only looking at canadian stuff at the moment and then we got some minor changes here uh with um with ci again because they bounce around so you'll see them you'll see a bunch of those funds right at the top you'll see a bunch of funds right at the bottom and that's exactly what we're seeing here and we see uh tesla once again you know while nvidia is it just um with the rocket fuel, uh, Tesla has got an anchor wrapped around. This is the second month in a row that uh, Tesla, the distribution has been slashed quite considerably uh, as the price falls. Uh, the yield, yes, will increase, but the yield can only go up so high in relation to the, the call options written on it. And it's got to fall kind of back in line with um, where it has typically been. And once we get to the yield tracker down here, we'll, we can look at Tesla and just look at the history from the start of the year where the yield has been, you'll notice that there is a range that the yield falls into. So even if the price falls, the typically the, the distribution output will, will kind of just follow suit just so it stays in, in more of a normal range for what it's used to. Again, life uh, lifetime change, uh, we see, so this is basically taken into account very first distribution uh, for all of these funds up until the most recent distribution. How much change has there been in that time? Again, kind of a mixed bag between all the fund managers. Uh, some of these funds are only a couple years old, which is um, which is great to see. I like to point out base. Um, they're, they've been around for, I believe, almost five years, but hey, almost 100% increase. Good, good enough for, you know, 20%. Uh, distribution increase per year but again some other really great nuggets you can find just in the health of these distribution increases lifetime and then yeah there's there's no doubt there's going to be some funds that don't uh, that don't keep up in that sense 
All right, let's move on to US-based uh, funds. We're gonna look at performance here. Uh, with the US funds, these guys are more, uh, in relation to Canadian cover call ETFs, I find that the Canadian side has a much more much more options, and especially because they also invest a lot more into the U.S. There's more sector funds, there's more index-based funds, more options with leverage, options with um, stability in the uh, distribution output. Uh, whereas the U.S. is more, uh, they all seem to like to heap into the indexes like the Nasdaq 100 the S&P 500, and then you'll get a lot of single stock ETFs, uh, no leverage, a lot of variability in the um, distribution. So either way, let's go and look at the performance over the last six months or so. What funds have what funds are on discount currently? Well, no surprise there, Tesla, we just talked about them. So we're seeing a lot of technology. Again, tech, this is gonna be really tech for at least the cover call ETF side of things, a lot of tech cover call ETFs, single stock ETFs. So a little bit harder to identify, say, a, per a particular sector. I mean, if tech's doing terrible, you're gonna see it throughout here. I'm um, seeing a lot of, unlike last time, I'm seeing a lot of diversified funds that are kind of near, well, I mean, I can't say that they're, they're doing poorly. I mean, they're doing okay. But uh, anyway, so there's there's your opportunities with the sectors here at the bottom. Uh, Jep Y actually that I know that's a very popular fund. Yeah, it's down 2.33 percent. That's in my opinion that's more stable. Sorry, that was year to date. So we're looking at six months. I was looking at year to date there. Yeah, Jep Wow, Jep Y down 10 percent. So again, if you uh, <clears throat> if you like the higher yields, 40 percent. Um, and it's and it's it's probably the most on sale diversified American fund out there. Uh, Defiance might give you that opportunity there. So let's just go to one month before we move on. Uh, let's see, one month. What are we looking at here? Let's see what's sec oh technology over the last month. No surprise. Again, like we like we were talking about in the last tab, bit of a curve in this in this last month. But it's also just the, the structures. We're looking at a lot of the yield max and defiance stuff here. And just so you're aware, yield max and defiance, uh, the way that these funds are structured, they don't actually invest in the underlying asset itself. They, they, uh, they expose you to the price fluctuation of that asset. So it's just the way that the, the, the fund strategy is, is constructed. So something to be aware of there. Uh, we won't look at anything else there. Let's move right along to distribution changes. Again, because it's variability, it, month over month, it's it's gonna change wildly. So you got a lot of yield max that have increased quite a bit. What I'm kind of more interested in is more of the, let's see, what diversified fund has increased the most? So DJIA with XYLG. Um, kind of in this top quadrant here. Let's see, let's see. What have they given us? And those are also um, variable uh, distributions as well. So XYLD up 6.7%. XYLG, basically a growth oriented version of XYLD up 8.28%. Uh, JEPQ, which actually invests in its underlying um, tech focused fund up 11.34 up 11.33 percent uh should say that again their distribution is variable but at least they're they actually own their underlying assets a very popular fund i believe this is the second biggest fund in north america at something like eight billion dollars aum uh and as we head down the list here monthly changes the biggest change uh let's see i spy you know, I had a lot of interest in, or I still do. I did a video on iSpy, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Its first distribution was something like 14%, and um, it got a very interesting strategy where it, uh, what it does is it holds all 500 companies in the S&P 500. It uses, um, uses these swap agreements and these other strategies I'm not as familiar with, and it uses those the assets that it holds as as collateral so it, it can generate you know a, a, a yield of what i was suspecting that hopefully it would hold in which was kind of that 14 to 15 percent range 
But uh, anyway, the distribution drops and we'll get to the, that yield in just a moment here. So we're looking at that. Let's now look at, uh, you know, is there any other points of note to look at? Google, once again, they're down. They were down last time as well on the prior video. Okay, uh, and once again, what's down lifetime? Man, all these funds bounce around so much, so it's, it's, it's a little bit trickier with the variability to really say like any one of these funds could just shoot up and, and then lifetime, the, they could be somewhere up here. It's a little bit trickier, um, but I'll leave that to all of your research. All right, now we're looking at, uh, we're looking at the yield tracker. And, and what I love about this is just the fact that it shows the history of how the yield has been uh, just prior to, to the release of, the, of each Cover Call ETF All-Star Tracker update. So we can see how the yield has performed and just see where and also identify opportunities in that, especially if the yield increases. But over the last month, there has been not as much uh, many yield increases as opposed to uh, yield decreases. The, the market overall has been up quite considerably over that last month, especially with the news of Jerome Powell from the Fed coming out and talking about interest rate cuts coming up. And that has certainly drove the market to run a bit higher, which means yields are going to go down in this case. But if we're looking for opportunities, especially on the Canadian side of things, what really stands out? Well, QQY, we just talked about QQQY stands out. It went from a yield of 10 point, you know, odd percent up to 15 with that massive distribution increase. So evolve like many of the Canadian ETF providers, their distributions are fairly stable. Uh, so hopefully this 15% um, stays, but again, there's opportunity there to jump in to a tech fund. If your mission is yield, that could be something there for you. And uh, another one that I'd, I'd probably wanna point out is uh, UMAX. This is a fund I own and you'll see that over the last, ever since January, it kind of just hovers in this range. It's been doing that pretty much ever since I've owned it, which is going back to last year. I, mean, I think I'm down maybe 3% on it price-wise. It's at the highest point it's ever been in regards to this tracker, 13.89%. Uh, there could be opportunity there. So if you're looking for just a stable utility fund, in my opinion, it, it's the most well-rounded um, utility fund out there. It is Canadian, so you're going to get the benefit of a little bit of tax relief with how it breaks down. So there is certainly opportunity opportunity there. And I hold it, I'm going to hold it for a very long time. Currently, it's in my TFSA, but once I get a taxable account, it'll be there. So other than that, let's move on to AUM. What, what in the world are we getting for AUM currently? Um, you'll see that uh, it's already filtered by the most inflows, basically, the month over month change in inflows. And what I like about this just in general when you go through it is that as long as we see green, it means that that inflows are healthy, lots of money flowing still into cover call ETFs. We see a little bit of red, a little bit of outflows from some of these funds. Um, one, one fund in particular I just wanted to point out is a USCL, very popular among Canadians, especially if you're looking for fund manager diversification. Uh, Horizon's a very, another one of the bigger providers of cover call ETFs, especially with leverage ETFs. We've seen um, an exodus of $12 million outside of USCL. To, and if, if that is a concern for people, I just also want you to understand that you just remember USCL holds one fund. It holds USCC. It takes an ETF and just applies 25% leverage. So what we wanna do is find USCC and see if the same sort of outflow has applied to USCC. And um, where is it here? There it is, USCC. How is that fund done? We're actually seeing an increase of 8.38% uh, month over month in its AUM and a year to date change of 34.32%. So just as an example, when you see outflows like that, make sure, take a look at the holdings. Do, are the holdings one, are they individual stocks or does the fund actually hold um, other ETFs? And there's lots of funds that are ETFs that hold other ETFs. So it's always good to, uh, um, always good to notice 
how's the underlying doing? And in this case, USCC doing just fine. USCL, you never know. Maybe a big investor or some institutional investor might have shed their exposure to uh, USCL for whatever reason. Maybe didn't want to. They don't want the exposure to leverage. Who knows? They could have even pivoted into just the USCC just to not have the um, the leverage exposure. So uh, that was really the only you know, uh, on the Canadian side of things, just to note there, like, yeah, Q, 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 Y, we just talked about them with yield. Uh, they declined just a little bit with 5.86%. Let's now move on to average three month volume tracker. Uh, what do we got here? We got a uh, month over month change. Not much to, to chat about here. Uh, vol this is three month average volume. This is, this is looking at liquidity. Uh, we care about liquidity because uh, if 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 over the say th three months you see a fund declining in uh, one that could affect uh, the price you buy it at, especially if it's very tiny, you could end up paying a lot more for it. Um, but also it could signify that the fund is losing steam. It's a fund that could potentially go under in uh, 2023. One fund, one cover call. ETF went under in Canada, which was BILT by Evolve. It was a real estate fund. Um, that sector for cover call ETFs doesn't really seem to be getting a lot of traction. There's only one left, and I believe it's by uh, Harvest HGR. So that just might that just might be a sector that just doesn't play well with with cover call options. It just might not. The market just clearly is maybe not big enough. But that's just an example of why we want to test. Um, three month average volume, see if it's falling. Same with AUM. If it's falling, you see the, the history of AUM over here. If it's falling, then, well, I should say, right from the beginning, if you see that it's falling, that could just be a red flag that um, the fund is, again, losing steam, could be on the chopping block. But so far, with the amount of funds that we see here in Canada, across the US, things are looking pretty good so far, but as I continue to do these videos, I'll of course let you know if anything gets cut and kind of what went, what went wrong with it. Uh, liquidity change is kind of a bit of a mix of half and half. We see that um, the trading volume overall has has dropped a bit among amongst probably half of all these funds. Uh, why that is, not really too sure. We see that AUM is up quite a bit, but trading volume is is sort of kind of half and half with um, with what we're seeing in green here. Lifetime change, I think it's no different. So once again, half half and half change, and um, yeah, just keep in mind with all those things that I was talking about as far as red flags are concerned. Uh, I kind of changed up distribution tracker. I just added, just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes, uh, just added in this, these dollar signs here um, and only went to four characters and says, so some of them have like six, some of them have like two. I just wanted to make it more, just again, just easier on the eyes. So I changed it just to, to four uh, characters when it, when it comes to that. All right, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at Canadian taxes here at the moment. Uh, this is something I did in my last video, uh, so I won't spend too much time here. But we're looking at all the all the columns you'd see in your T3 tax breakdown, and it includes anything that any Canadian fund that's on this list that was that has a history from last year will be should be here. It gives you a breakdown of return of capital, foreign ta tax withheld, and also. I think what's going to be more useful is I split it up. So we have columns here for the dollar amount, but over here we have the the options for uh, looking at it in percentages, which I think is more helpful. So we can look at just what is 100% return of capital. Again, this technically by definition, it's your own money coming back to you, but I digress. It, there's more to it than that. Check out those prior tax videos, like I said. But we can see here that with again, return of capital doesn't get taxed. So then we can kind of focus on sort of these other columns that are can be also tax friendly, like eligible dividends, capital gains, but other income, foreign income, not as tax friendly, that's gain tax at your marginal tax rate. And then foreign tax withheld, this is, this is tax that is taken at source. So before you even get your distribution, you know, uh, uh, these amounts are already chopped off. So 
this was what was added for this month's tracker and um, we can of course use that going forward for tax purposes so uh, again just get familiar with taxes especially this is going to help identify uh, those favorable tax opportunities going forward can't stress enough in my other prior videos i go through all of that so check out all of those videos i have a playlist for it and um, with that being said um, that basically is it for this this video so as always if you like what you see then hit all the buttons of like and subscribe variety and i'll see you all in the next video